What's up, y'all? I got a banger from Manosphere Highlights Daily. Let's get straight into it. Now I look at myself sometimes and I just think I'm so gross. You are not gross. I big back, big back, big back, big back. <laughs> I was actually working really hard on the apps for like the last couple weeks. I mean, messaging every single man that I matched with, complimenting people I didn't match with. I've never put that much effort into it. And I got finally got one response, one. And the guy was really- I know this may be crazy. And let me know if you guys agree or disagree in the comments, but us as men, we care about your weight. We care about what you look like physically. That's why women wear makeup and men lie. Because women care about what they're being told, but men care about what they see. Do you guys agree? Let me know in the comments. So ladies, instead of working so hard trying to procure a man, go get your butt in the gym and start looking on, start, start working on looking good aesthetically, being fit, feminine, friendly, cooperative. Fit is the first one though. You look good, men will approach you. You don't look good, it's really tough. Most men don't want big backs. Big back, big back. I'm just keeping it a buck. Let me know in the comments. Do you agree? Attractive and I just said, hey, how are you? And he said, um, he said, um, Chad Welcome Shark. to Manosphere Highlights Daily. Today, and there is a lot of big fat fat and okay, how that go. shapes the rest of their dating lives. These clips are from My Big Fat Fabulous Life, the reality show. It's pure gold. And there is- She's repping it, being fat. A lot to unpack. So let's dive right in. It's nerve wracking being face to face with Alessandra. Like the fact that you need a matchmaker to help you find a man feels pretty vulnerable and kind of embarrassing, even though obviously this is what she does all the time. I'm just really hoping that she has some solutions to facilitate. I, I, I almost biggity bet you. Let me know in the comments or let me know in the chat right now. Do you think she says anything about her weight? That would be the first thing I would say. That's what Kevin Samuels used to do. He used to say, how tall are you? Dress size? How much did you weigh the last time you weighed yourself? And he would play his from front on from front. You know what I mean? We care about what you look like. And I know you ladies want to sit there and talk about all this other thing. Well, I dress well and I have a career and I have this and I have that. We don't care about that. We don't care about it at all. Tate finding me a good quality date. First things first, matchmakers. Let me break it to you. Matchmakers are no magicians. No. If you're going in with the idea that a matchmaker can turn someone with a 3 out of 10 sexual market value into an 8, you're setting yourself up for disappointment. Don't fall for these snakes selling you dreams and taking your money. Dating is not easy and I'm so glad you had that time with him. That was wonderful. But now that train has left the, the station. station. Uh -huh. He was not able to give you the full commitment right. that you right. Right. absolutely right. deserve. Right. And this Ooh, already bad advice. You don't deserve anything. And let's break up. Let's break up the rating system here. You know, it's a one out of ten. Ten being beautiful, gorgeous, whatever. One being you're beat to bits. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you're beat up from the feet up type. There's relationship market uh, market place value, and there's sexual marketplace value. So. Like, let's say you're a corn star, for example. Your sexual marketplace value will probably be very high because you know what you're doing in the sheets. You may be a magician. You're a mattress actress. You know exactly how to please a man sexually. But your relationship market sh uh, marketplace value would be a one because no guy wants to wife a corn star. So we put those two numbers together. The median of those or the average would be a five, right? Let's say you're a girl that is a virgin and you're really hot. You're a 10 on both. Then you're an actual 10. You, so you have to you have to base it off those two: the relationship market marketplace value and the sexual marketplace value. So this woman right here, maybe her relationship marketplace value is really good. You know, maybe maybe she's a really cool chick. She's easy to hang out with. She can cook, clean, do all the things that a woman should be able to do. But her sexual marketplace value, I'm gonna keep it a buck. When you're overweight, it's like a one. And she's repping being fat. I'm not calling her fat. Big back. Big I'm not calling back. her fat. Big back. Big Back. She called herself fat. So it is what it is, but I'm saying that you're a one. So it comes out to an average of a, let's, let's say, let's say an average of a four or a five. So that then take it a step further. Life is a mirror, not a window. You know, need to go get a guy that's a four or a five. And then you need to decide, do I want to be the cute one or do I want to be the ugly one? A lot of girls want to be the cute one in the relationship. So you need to get a guy that's below you. If you want him to be the cute one, then it's going to be tougher. You're going to have to go out of your way to procure a guy that's better looking than you. This is why I recommend different avenues. Um, definitely dating apps are one avenue. Even the matchmaker is yeah. telling her to hit the dating apps. There's no escaping digital interactions these days. 
In fact, look at this. The matchmaker conversation itself isn't even in person. Thanks. This woman could be across the globe for all we know. Sure, it's good for business, but bad for building real connections. We're more connected than ever, yet the loneliness epidemic is at an all-time high. Mm -hmm. That says it all. I was actually working really hard on the apps for like the last couple weeks. I mean, messaging every single man that I matched with, complimenting people I didn't match with. I've never put that much effort into it. Big ass back. And I got finally got one response, one. And the guy was really attractive and I just said, hey, how are you? And he said, um, you're a goddess. And I said, oh, well, that's an interesting you know, answer to, hey, how are you? But thank you. And then he said, DTF, and I said, uh, I didn't say anything, and then he said, um, I'm 11 inches in thick. You know, so I feel like for me. <laughs> I love it. For those who don't know, DTF means down to. It's now listen closely. It's down to buck, man. To what she says next. Like, I've had enough sex in life, you know what I mean? I, I, most women don't have problem getting sex, so I'm not, I don't care about that anymore. She's a runner, she's a track star. So now her relationship marketplace value is even lower now. So, so we're, we're probably in the ones or the twos. <laughs> this is pure gold. She's like, I've been ran, but I want a guy to come in and pick up the pieces. Shots fired! Shots fired! We're not doing that. Stupid. Just confirmed what we've been saying all along. Women, even the land whales, have no problem getting sex. This guy was probably a Chad or looking to add a fat one to his roster for the night. Notice how she said, I don't care about that anymore. I, most women don't have problem getting sex, so I'm not, I don't care about that anymore. Meaning she cared a lot when she was younger. Yeah. But now that she's pushing 40, she suddenly wants to have standards. The real problem? Once women engage with a Chad, they are left Chad struck. Chad struck. Nobody's really telling the truth here. You know, I think, you know, Whitney is picky. She wants something that's kind of out of reach. And she got a jar of pickles? What in the... <laughs> what is going on? She wants everything to be lined up perfectly. That's not going to help her get a man. You know, that's kind of, I think, a problem is that she's expecting some perfect elaborate you know love connection and that just doesn't happen mm -hmm. i mean if you can't look inwards and see what's wrong with yourself i don't know if anyone's going to be able to convince you you know everybody telling you that you're perfect all the time isn't going to make you change this is why matchmakers throw in the towel and stop taking on female clients Good Lord. these women are downright delusional you can't help these body positivity warriors by the way, this guy is her ex. And let me tell you, there's nothing fat about him. We've exposed this many, 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 many times on this channel. Fat women want nothing to do with fat. It's so true. Yeah, fat chicks don't like fat dudes. They don't like fat. Golly. Thin and you had no problems attracting men. That's true. <laughs> How many pickles does this woman eat a day? If there is something that you could change. You were thin and you had no problems attracting men. That's true. <laughs> if there is something that you could change about yourself to make things Your easier way. for you, would you consider losing weight again? You've done it in the past. <laughs> you <laughs> these pickle bites, bro. <laughs> Put the pickles down. Get on the frickin' treadmill. Bad, As Bill Burr would say, you ate your way in, so walk your way out falling all over you you would light up a room and everybody was attracted to you they still are but size no, holds not. you back you're fat lose weight when you can't get in front of a man because she's so easily discounted i mean she is just dismissed so quickly i have watched it happen over and over again if there was something about me that i could change that would help me reach my goals i would probably do it yeah <laughs> Well, men change their mindset to fit their environment. Women change their environment to fit their mindset. Women would rather complain and be around a bunch of yes women or yes men that agree with them as opposed to men are like, you know what? I'm fat. I need to go to the gym. This right here is the hard truth. 
men in general aren't attracted to fat women. Facts, and guess dude. what? Most women aren't attracted to fat men either. He got a point. But I know the modern dating scene sucks, but so does getting hurt physically. Have you ever been the victim of a personal injury case? Every year as an image consultant, I meet so many different types of clients. And a lot of them are recovering from injuries or accidents, ranging from car accidents to workplace injuries. And I was extremely surprised to see how many people lost their personal injury cases, which is why I'm here to talk about Morgan and Morgan. America's largest injury law firm. They specialize in a wide variety of personal injury cases, and they have won thousands of big cases. And if you do end up working with them, they will fight for the money you deserve. Just recently, Morgan & Morgan secured verdicts of $12 million in Florida and $26 million in Philly. That's up to 40 times the highest insurance offer. And I'm telling you, your case could be worth millions. And the best part is it's all free unless you win your case. If you have also been a victim of a personal injury or a serious accident, you can visit www.forthepeople.com slash Levi found in the description below where you can start your free claim today. And because she's so easily discounted. I mean, she is just dismissed so quickly. I have watched it happen over and over again. If there was something about me that I could change that men are expected to take these women just as they are. Men are fed up with this. I can't sit here and tell you to man up and settle for something that doesn't benefit you. It's not fair and it's foolishness. You couldn't even pick this woman up on your wedding night. <laughs> yeah, let me pick you up, baby. You can't even do that. It's not <clears throat> logic. Obesity is through the roof and it's not just unattractive, it's unhealthy. Facts. Why in the blue hell would you want an unhealthy girlfriend? Mm -hmm. And why would a woman want to be unhealthy for her man facts the foolishness and why is she wearing a ring on her like wedding wedding finger like what is that that's a ring finger what's she doing these women don't have your best interest at heart think about that here check this out it's not only about the men it is the way that you become invisible to the entire world it is the way that everything communicates to you that you are worth nothing now because you're fat yeah. Have I done myself a disservice yes. by doing what I thought was right, which was accepting myself and owning my fatness and repositioning it as, you know, not this horrible thing? Like, was all of that wrong? Yes, it was. Right or wrong? Yeah, yeah yes, a hundred percent, it was. That's like me. That's like me being an alcoholic and being a like. I just accept my alcoholism. I accept that I'm an addict, and I I love alcohol, and I love being a degenerate and belligerently drunk all the time, and being abusive to the people around me that love me. I've accepted that. Therefore, it's good, and you should love me. It makes no sense. <laughs> it makes no sense. <laughs> You're gonna be a type two diabetic soon. <laughs> Your type 1 single woman, type 2 diabetes. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, honey. It doesn't matter who gives a shit. This is about attraction. And attraction is not a choice. If you're trying to be in a relationship, mm -hmm. you've got to take men's preferences into account. Thanks. You can't force men to desire something they are naturally not into. The same goes for women. Their hypergamous nature won't let them feel attraction for men who are right, lower. You, you, don't see, you don't see fat dudes on TLC, Access Hollywood, talking about, why don't women accept me? I'm a big fat guy, I'm fat. Why don't women like me? They know why. They 100% know why. Here, let me, let me, dude, so I was at, um, I went to the rodeo this weekend, with my family. And uh, there was a guy out there who was like, a, I guess, a comedian, rodeo clown slash host or MC. And um, they were like, he, he was a fat dude. And they were like, he was like, play a song. He told the DJ, play a song that like embodies me. And he, it was a Michael Jackson cover. And it's like, I'm fat, I'm fat, you know it. <laughs> and it was like four songs in a row about him being fat. And I, and I just thought like, if it was a woman out there, you could not call a woman fat publicly and her just laugh about it. But guys, they laugh about it all the time. Ladies, welcome to their world. We don't accept you for being unhealthy and having no discipline or control. Like, people don't understand that, like, I believe 75 to 80% 80 of somebody's judgment of you is how you look superficially. If you show up looking like a slob, people aren't gonna take you serious. 
It's like if I showed up to a business meeting and I saw another guy that was overweight, disheveled, wasn't dressed well, didn't smell good, didn't look good aesthetically, I would immediately start judging him. You want people to take you more seriously? Get in shape and dress well. Be groomed. And then watch how you speak. Speak eloquently. Speak with conviction. Speak and be heard. Instead of people being like, what did you just say? Don't speak quietly. Look people in the eyes. Stand up. Shake their hand. Simple things like that. People will take you so much more serious because they see you take yourself serious and you have conviction. But she's just whining and complaining about being big backed. Big back, big back, big back, big back. And like, we don't feel bad for her just like we don't feel bad for the fat men. On the social economic <clears throat> ladder. Fellas, this game costs money. Whether you like it or not. And once Can you imagine her running up a red lobster bill on you? <laughs> Ooh boy. He running up a fat bill. Dad comes into the picture, smashing to the below average field. It's game over. These women are left chat struck and they can't chat settle truck. for anything less. The internet, like a performance enhancing drug, only feeds this delusion. No matter how hard you try, you can't convince these women to have realistic standards. Only when reality hits them square in the face, when they have no other options left, will they consider changing. And 9 out of 10 times, it's too late. And this woman knows exactly what time it is, which is why you shouldn't feel sorry for her. Mm -mm. No, I look at myself sometimes and I just think I'm so gross. You are not gross. But if I, and if I lost weight, I would just continue to get grosser. Like, I mean, well, where is all this skin going to go? You know what I mean? And like being this age and the, the whole thing just like overwhelms me. And I just see you becoming more and more hopeless. I know there are things you want that you don't have, but please do not give up. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. You got everything else. Thank you. <laughs> Let a man keep his clothes. Now, can I get a drizzle, 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 drizzle? I'm saying, dude, like, <clears throat> ladies, it's really hard for us to feel bad for you when you're big back because we know that you just couldn't put the fork down. Put the fork down, dude. Nobody feels bad for fat da fat guys. Where's all the skin gonna go? Where's all this skin gonna go? What's gonna happen? It's still gonna be gross. <laughs> Try. Yes, it will still probably be gross, but you can at least go get surgery to get that extra skin removed. Go to the gym, start running, start walking, start doing cardio, start eating less than a thousand calories a day. It's really not that hard. You're going to be judged on the decision you've made for the rest of your life. Does it suck? Yeah, it does suck. You can get arrested at 18 and become a felon, and for the rest of your life, you're going to be seen as a felon. Does it suck? Yeah. But you can either be the victim of your circumstance or the hero of your own story. This is why I say your past can be a springboard or it can be a crutch. A lot of women take their past as a crutch and they say, poor me, I'm going to play the victim. Whereas men, what I urge you to do is take your past and make it be your springboard. I wasn't perfect. I was raised up super poor. I got in trouble with the law. I could be a degenerate right now. I was supposed to be a statistic. I was raised by a single mother and we were poor, super poor. Ramen noodles, mac and cheese and hot dogs, hamburger helper every night. That's where I came from. I was supposed to be in jail. I'm supposed to be in jail. I should, I should have been dealing drugs. I was real close to being a degenerate, gents. I was real close. But the thing is, I realized that the people I was around weren't helping me become the man I should be. So I changed my surroundings. I changed the people I was around. I found better role models. I started reading self-help books. I started going to the gym. I didn't even know what I was doing when I went to the gym, but I started going. You can change your life around today. Once again, your past is a springboard or a crutch and it's your choice what it does. It goes back to the thing of like pressure. Pressure does one of two things. It either busts pipes or makes diamonds. And for ladies like that, it's probably going to bust the pipes and she's going to get overwhelmed and she's going to cry and say, oh my gosh, woe is me. Everything is not my fault. When in reality, everything is your fault. Stop being the victim of your own story and be the hero of it. You got things going bad in your life right now? Cool. Take that. Use it as fuel to the fire and motivate you to be better. Success is the best revenge. I'm telling you right now, I had people that counted me out in high school, counted me out in college, but now they see what I'm doing online and on social media, and then when I go back home and they see me, wow, man, you're doing so well. You're doing so well, man. You really got an audience now, huh? Shut up. Get out of my face with all that fakeness. You just want to be a part of the success story. You wasn't with me when I was down bad. But it's great. 
Because you see it and you see where they are now. They might have been winning back then, but they're not winning now. Success is the best revenge. Let your results show off where you're at right now. Don't let your talk do it. Because talk is often the substitute for action. Stop talking about the things you're going to do and just go do them. Results respond to effort. You want something to work for you? Go start working on it today. Don't wait. Oh, I'm going to get this plan and I'm going to get all this going. And No, start doing it. I didn't have a plan for this YouTube channel. I just started doing it. And now that people have seen me have success, they're like, Levi, I need, to, I need to start a YouTube channel. I need to start doing what you're doing because they think it's fucking easy. Showing up every day, finding videos to react to, scheduling interviews with people, learning, getting online, doing tons of research. This stuff is not easy. None of it's easy. But everybody thinks it is. They see the success I've had and they think, oh, I could do that. Levi's doing it. I could do it. How about you post a video every day for 100 days straight and then come talk to me? And when I tell people that, because people hit me up on IG all the time, Levi, I want to start a YouTube channel. What should I do? I say, post a 20 minute video every day for 100 days straight. And they're like, that's a lot of work. Yeah, it is a lot of work. You want to do it. You asked. <laughs> so I'm telling you, this is what you do. <laughs> Just saying, this is what you want. You think you think something worth having is going to be worth working for, or do you think it's just going to be easy? All right, I'm going to get off my soapbox and get off my rant. Loki, did you have a good time today? You were sleeping the whole time, so I didn't have a carrot for you. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Go cop the ebook in the description. The four pillars of personality makes you irresistible to women and respected by men. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Loki, did you have a good time? Did you have a good time? I hope he did. I will see you guys tomorrow, man. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Peace.